This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma and social media support is provided by Word Mice. So Arnold in his last start against Vallejo, he got the win, went five and two thirds, allowed six runs, four earned on seven hits. He struck out three and walked three in that game. He came out with the win. Won every game he started this year, and now he'll work out of the stretch with Arts in the right-handed hitting second baseman at the plate. Birds at first, and the first pinch is a slider taken outside for ball one. Arts in the right-handed hitting second baseman, 277, no home runs, but 17 RBIs for him. And they have Arnold out of the stretch early here tonight. Defensively behind Connor Arnold, it's DeAngelis in left, Hubbard in center, Williams over in right. He throws on 1-0, and, and it's topped foul up the third base line. Gata is at third base tonight, Barrios at short, with Romero at second, Quitzer over at first, and... Daniel Molinari doing the catching tonight. And for Nick Gata, his 
third start at third base, and for Racer Romero, only his fifth start over at second. Arnold set at the belt. Here's his 1-1 pitch to Artson. That is shot foul up the first baseline, and he's ahead of him 1-2. and two. Stompers who are 11 and two here at home, seven and three on the road after the marathon win last night. Three hours and 46 minutes, 25 runs, and 25 hits in that game last night. Something you don't notice until you go back and look at the box score later on. The one-two pitch to Arts, and there goes Bird. It's fouled away. Count remains one and two. Fireworks tonight. We're on the road tomorrow in San Rafael, who just beat Vallejo, a final of 5-1. to one. That game will start at 6.30. That's on the Stompers Radio Network. And then back here on Saturday, 6.05 start. It's Pride Night, June, July 6th, that is. Hubbard slightly to right center. Here's the 1-2 pitch, and that is a called strike three on the outside corner. Arnold has his first strike out of the game, and there's one out for Luis Martini. First strike out the looking variety. Omar Artson disagreed with the call, and he let Dean Poteet know about it. Dean Poteet calls balls and strikes. Gary Reichelmeyer in the field, your Pacific Association umpiring crew here for tonight's game. Everybody in the red, white, and blue tonight, the players sporting their colors on the field. Here's Luis Martini, the shortstop. Arnold's first pitch is outside and low. The front office is in red, white, and blue. The players with their red, right, white, and blue accessories tonight. Chris Quitzer, I'd have to say, is the one that's the most decked out for the Stompers here tonight with the American flag socks pulled up high. He has brand new red cleats for today, and he's got the red arm sleeve in the tape. A nice, easy toss over to first. Bird, who took a couple of jab steps towards second base, and then Arnold with his first throw over to Quitzer at first base, a nice, easy one. If he would have let it loose and shown him the A move, he would have had it pinked off easily. The 1 0 pitch to Martini is chopped softly on the ground to third, but it looked like it got a piece of the foot. And it hit off the elbow guard, actually. So it looked like Martini got a piece on the, toward the handle of the bat, but it got him in the elbow guard rolling it up third. So that's a hit by pitch and the stock gate of a runner in scoring position for the designated hitter, Jacob Wooler. Wooler, 295, no home runs, 11 RBIs. He has Bird at second, Martini at first, a walk and a hit by pitch against Arnold here in the first. No score. Shadows creeping on the left side of the infield. Shading Gata at third and a majority of the grass on the left side. Just reaching the shoe tops of Connor Arnold, his Lower half, knee down in some scattered shadows from the trees. He looks to second, his first pitch. There goes the runner. The throw to third is right on the bag, and they got him, says Reichel Meyer. <laughs> Daniel Marl, Nari's throw right on the bag. Nick Gata slaps the tag down on Justin Bird, and now Chuck Rocker's going to come out. They had the double steal on, and Chuck Rocker wants to talk to Gary Reichel Meyer. Rocker has to be careful. He is the manager, but the starting center fielder. And now Michael Meyer is going to have a conversation with Dean Poteet. The pitch was outside for ball one, and Bird was arguing something. He said that maybe got to drop the ball, but they're going to keep the call as it was. So Bird's thrown out trying to steal third base. Two out now. It's 1-0 and on Jacob Wooler. And following the double steal, Martini goes up to second. So still a runner in scoring position for Salina. And Jacob Buller with a base hit could break our scoreless tie. We're only in the top of the first. Arnold set at the belt. Martini leads from second. He throws on 1-0, and and Roller rolls it softly to first. Quitzer's there. He'll flip to Connor Arnold. And Salina is retired here in the first. We go to the home half of the inning. Got to Williams DeAngelis and the rest of the stomper lineup when we come back. We're scoring. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by 
Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Makes three home runs and 13 runs batted in. Lang's first pitch. Williams hits it in the air to center. Not very deep. Coming on hard is Rocker. He's still coming in. He will settle down and make the catch right above the head. Chuck Rocker thought it was hit on the screws off the bat. Williams, who got underneath it. Rocker took four steps back and then came racing in. So here's Rob DeAngelis with nobody on and two out. DeAngelis this year hitting... 321 with seven doubles. That leads the team. In last night's ball game against Vallejo, DeAngelis doubled. The Stompers had five doubles in that game. Three of the five back to back to back. Here's DeAngelis against Lang, the left hander, who hits the outside corner with a two seam fastball, and it's nothing in one. Two seam slider curveball changeup for Lang. He has one start against the Stompers this year when he was a member of the San Rafael Pacifics. He took a loss in that game. Here's his 0-1 to DeAngelis. Curve ball rolled softly, foul up the first baseline, and it's nothing in two. In that start for Lang, he went three innings, allowed four runs on seven hits. He struck out two and walked one. So we got hit around by the Stomper lineup in that game. So far against Lang, two up, two down here in the last of the first. No score just yet. The left-hander kicks and throws on 0-2. DeAngelis fights it off to stay alive. Stomper's best team in the league offensively and pitching. Best pitching staff. Salina, worst pitching staff in the league and their fourth best offensively overall. Here's the 0-2 again to DeAngelis. Curve ball, he rolls it softly, foul up the first baseline again. Jacob Barfield who gets the night off. Over at first base, and the coach's box makes the play. Lots of room in right center for DeAngelis. Rocker playing over toward the left center gap. Infield deep all the way around. Left-handed hitter, 321, two home runs, 12 driven in. Lang kicks and deals on 0-2. DeAngelis fouls it off. Another curve ball from Neil Lang. And after three pitches... We're only needed for Lang to get the first two outs. DeAngelis will see the sixth pitch of the at bat. Coming up from Lang, it's still nothing in two. Dondre Hubbard is on deck. Lang deals. Curveball misses outside for ball one. 
DeAngelis, who has been one of the more clutch hitters on this Stompers Club in the late weeks of June and here in July. Only, th only the third game in the month of July here tonight, the one-two from Lang. DeAngelis fouls it off again. And Dondre Hubbard, who is in on the on-deck circle and as close to home plate as he can be, right behind DeAngelis almost. It almost got Hubbard in the on-deck circle, so it's still one and two on DeAngelis. The eighth pitch of the bat coming up to DeAngelis from Lang, the left-hander, out of SoCal. He kicks and throws. DeAngelis fights it off again. So a good battle for Rob DeAngelis running up the pitch count of Neil Lang after only three pitches were needed to retire Gata and Williams. Both put the ball in play. Gata fly to left and Williams fly to center. So DeAngelis trying to spark something here in the home half of the first with two out and nobody on. Middle of the infield is wide open. Martini at short is over toward the hole and Bird actually arts in at second. Has his heels on the grass deep at second base. So anything softly over the mound or up the middle softly for DeAngelis will more than likely be a base hit. Lang on one and two. DeAngelis down on strikes. Threw him a curveball down below the knees. He chased. The Stompers go one, two, three here in the first. We're scoreless. Gelfman, Zutenhorst, Kozak, 5-6-7 for Salina when we return. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State of the art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community oriented and family owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. I'm in Zutenhorst and Kozak for Chuck Rocker's Stockade. 15 pitches for Arnold in the first inning. He walked a man and hit a man, got a strikeout. And had some help from his catcher, Daniel Molinari, who threw out Justin Bird trying to steal third base. And then got Jacob Bowler to roll to Chris Quitzer over at first to end the inning. So Gelfman stands in right side, 330 average. Tied for second with eight home runs. He takes a slider away for ball one. Dondre Hubbard, who of course leads the Pacific Association with nine home runs. Gelfman... And Axel Johnson both with eight. One ball in, no strikes to count on Gelfman. Arnold working slowly, now he kicks in the 1-0 pitch. Curveball on the ground, left side, Barrios deep in the hole, backhanded, the long throw, Quitzer can't dig it out. Gelfman's headed for second base, that'll be a throwing error on Pedro Barrios over at short. So an E6 and the 
Defensive woes continue for the Stompers. They had three errors in last night's ball game. All three came in the first two innings. So a man at second, nobody out for Taylor Zutenhorst. Zutenhorst, who came over from San Rafael, traded at the end of June. Left-handed hitting first baseman with power, hitting 294. No home runs or RBIs with Salina just yet. But he'll bat with a man in scoring position in the top of the second inning with nobody out. Arnold looks to second. His first pitch inside Molinari, backhands in the dirt. It's 1-0. Zutenhorst left-handed hitter with Gelfman out at second. Wind now blowing out towards center field and Zutenhorst digs back in. Arnold who hasn't looked as sharp here tonight so far in the first inning plus. He looks to second and throws. That's inside again. Two balls and no strikes the count and Daniel Molinari will go out and talk to his right-hander. This gives us a chance to remind you that if you're listening here at the ballpark tonight, fireworks on the field after the game. Bring your blanket out to the field. Chairs will not be allowed on the playing surface. We're in San Rafael tomorrow at 6.30 first pitch. The first and second place teams will go at it at Albert Park. And then on Saturday here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field, it'll be Pride Night. Tickets are still available for Saturday night's game, so make sure you purchase them now. Here's the 2-0, and Zutenhorst chases a changeup. The count is 2-1. and one. Straight away, all the way around, Barrios had short keeping. Gelfman close. Arnold set at the belt. No look, here's the 2-1. On the inside corner, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Fastball for Connor Arnold. Zutenhorst took it, thought it was inside. Strike two, says Dean Poteet. Wind blowing to center. Arnold with one strike out in the ball game so far. He looks to second, throws. On the ground, right side. Romero is there. He'll field it, throw to first, one out. Gelfman goes over to third. Here's the catcher, Eric Kozak. 159 average for Kozak. Three home runs and 11 runs batted in. And an RBI opportunity here with just one out and a runner at third. So a ground ball would do it for Kozak in a strikeout situation for Connor Arnold. Gata is even with the bag at third, just a step off the infield grass, and they're deep all the way around the rest of the infield. Arnold pauses his first pitch to Kozak. Slider misses high for ball one. Arnold, part of this pitcher's staff, this starting staff for the Stompers. He possesses the highest ERA at 3.18. Here's the 1-0, another slider. That's lifted to left. And no doubt about it, Eric Kozak has his fourth home run of the season, and Salina's on the board first. It's 2-1, 2 to one, two to nothing. Kozak with his fourth of the year. He now has 13 runs batted in. Salina on the board first. It's 2-0, and now Cody Bishop will hit with the bases empty and one out. Bishop left-handed hitting left fielder, and Connor Arnold throws a first pitch. Fast ball at 93 in for strike one on the outside corner. Arnold... You can anger him easily, and the velocity will just go up from there. Here's his 0-1 delivery. Outside, 1-1. One one. Arnold's a guy that mixes up the timing through the wind-up motion. Very Johnny Cueto-like with the leg kick, the turn to show the hitter the number, and the 1-1's one -one's on the ground to Barrios. He scoops this one up. His throw is... On the money this time for out number two. <laughs> 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 <laughs 
Here's the nine hole hitter, Chuck Rocker. Here's Rocker, 271 average, no home runs for him. Right handed hitter, the first pitch on the outside corner for strike one. So only one of the runs in the inning earned against Connor Arnold. Gelfman, who reached on the air by Barrios at short. Arnold throws on 0 1. Rocker takes high and in. Stompers 3 1 against the Stockade and 11 2 here at home. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Rocker fouls it off at the plate, and it's 1-2. and two. One and two the count, and Arnold trying to get out of this second inning. Here's his pitch to Chuck Rocker. On the ground to short, Barrios charges. He'll pick the short hop and then bobble it. Two errors in the inning for Pedro Barrios out at shortstop. And reminiscent of last night's second inning where Nick Gata committed two errors in the inning. And now back to the top of the lineup for Justin Bird. Stoppers trail 2-0 here in the second. 1-2-3. The Stoppers win in the home half of the first. Arnold out of the stretch, his first pitch to Bird. He fouls it away off to the left. Nothing won the count on Bird, who walked his first time up. Leading from first base, Chuck Rocker in an 0-1 count. Here's the pitch. That's back on Justin Bird. count. Two runs this inning on the Kozak two-run homer to straightaway left. Hubbard shading toward left center. Here's the 1-1. One, one. There goes Rocker. The pitch is inside. It goes all the way to the screen. Chuck Rocker steals second. He's now in scoring position for Justin Bird with a 2-1 count with two out. 2-0, Stompers trail in the second. On a very warm night here at Palooza Park. Arnold's 2-1 pitch. Punch down the air, down the left field line. Coming on is DeAngelis. It'll fall in foul territory. 2-2 two two the count on Bird, the leadoff man. Hitting for the second time in his many innings. Arnold trying to escape this second with no further damage. His team was won six straight and is 18 and five overall. Rocker a walking lead from second, two out, two balls, two strikes, two nothing. Stoppers trail and of course here in inning number two. Arnold's pitch, fouled off. He elevated the fastball, Bird went up and got it and got a piece. Now the first pitch, he squares around and bunts it foul. Stomper defense for the second night in a row. Sloppy in the first two innings. Two errors both on Barrios out at short. And with two strikes, Arnold left a fastball up to Justin Bird and he hit it into center field for an RBI single. Here's the 0-1. Artson takes inside, 1-1. One and one. Single and advances to second on the throw by Hubbard. Hubbard's throw, who was strong to the plate, but up the first baseline a little bit. So no chance for Molinari to try and get Rocker. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Change up across the letters for strike two. That's a nasty movement on it, almost like a two-seam. But at about 83.
One and two the count on Omar Artson. He's the only strikeout for Arnold in the ball game, and he needs a big out here with three runs in. Only one of them earned the home run. That brought in two. Here's the one-two pinch to Omar Artson. He punched it down the right field line. That is fair, and it'll roll to the corner. Scoring easily is Bird. Artson is on his way to second, and he will stop there with a two-out double to bring home Justin Bird, and it is four to nothing. And Arnold, who the last two batters had a two-strike count and just left a fastball up, and here comes pitching coach Mike Nunez. Arnold, who has not been sharp here in the second. A couple of errors. The home run, an RBI single, and then the RBI double from Omar Arts, and so now the infield will come in. Nunez has a conversation with the whole infield. The mound visit has concluded. It's a 4-0 stockade lead here in the top of the second inning. Connor Arnold, who has not had much help from his defense, but also in two strike counts, he's left pitches up in the zone that the stockade can drive, not only get a piece of, but that can hit down the line or into the gap for extra bases. So here's the three-hole hitter, the shortstop, Luis Martini. He was hit by a pitch his first time against Arnold, so no official at bat. Hubbard playing him toward left center. Arnold's first pitch. On the outside corner with strike one. Wind gusting to center, not very strong. Arnold at the belt, he looks to second. He throws on 0-1-1. On the inside corner, but called ball one. Little off, says Dean Poteet. Martini, who has left the yard three times this year and he's driven in 16, a 264 batting average. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Lined right back past the head of Arnold into center field for a base hit. Scoring from second is Omar Artson and it is 5-0. And Arnold is just lucky that he got out of the way. Somehow it snuck between the glove and the head of Connor Arnold. And now here comes Zach Pace. He was going to check him out. Arnold waves him off. Jacob Wooler will be the hitter. He's the ninth man to hit here in the top of the second inning. Arnold mercifully trying to end this half inning, and Wooler chases a changeup in the dirt. Nothing in one the count. On Jacob Wooler, the designated hitter, he bounced to Quitzer at first his first time up. The 0-1 pitch. Inside in the dirt, blocked by Molinari, and it's one and one. So the stopper offense will have to come to life tonight as it did in last night's ball game after trailing early to Vallejo. One and one the count on the left-handed hitting Wohler. Here's the one, one pitch. There goes the runner. It's inside, called a strike. The throw down in plenty of time, and he's called safe. Martini with a stolen base, and it looked like Barrios got the glove on the hip of Martini before he got into the bag, but called safe by Gary Reichel Meyer. The one two pitches swung on and missed, so that mercifully ends the inning for Connor Arnold, but five runs come across for Salina. It's 5 nothing. We go to the home half of the second. Middle third of the order. The big bats coming up for the Stompers. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by 
Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Salina so put up five runs in the top half against Connor Arnold. Stoppers went one, two, three in the first, and Dondre Hubbard, who's third in the league in batting average, set 362. Leads the league in home runs and RBIs, 9 and 34. He'll try and start things off for this stomper offense in the second against left hander Neil Lang. Lang's first pitch to Dondre Hubbard, a breaking ball, misses outside and low. One ball and no strikes. Lang, who didn't fare well against the Stompers in his first start against the club this year when he was a member of the San Rafael Pacifics, only lasted three innings. Stompers trying to get to him here in the second, the 1-0 pitch. Inside to Hubbard, two balls and no strikes. Stompers, who did not take batting practice today, were a part of the parade this morning here in Sonoma, the 4th of July parade. No BP today. So we'll see if that even plays a psychological factor for the guys. The 2-0 is hit in the air. Shallow right. Now blowing into foul territory. Zutenhorst over and he makes the catch. So Hubbard pops out in foul territory. Here's Chris Quitzer. Quitzer had his best offensive night last night. He went four for five and was a triple shy of the cycle driving in four. He enters the game at a 283 average, three home runs, 19 runs batted in. Quitzer, the left-handed hitting first baseman, stands in against Neil Lang, who kicks and fires. Quitzer takes a breaking ball for strike one. Owen won the count to Quitzer. Here's the pitch. Takes a fastball for strike two on the inside corner. So no balls and two strikes early in the count to Chris Quitzer who finds himself in a hole. Stompers trailing 5-0, last of the second. The 0-2 pitch. High and away, one ball and two strikes. Stompers in an early hole in the offense trying to dig him out of it. Neil Lang, the left-hander, against Quitzer, the left-handed batter. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Quitzer flares it into the air, straight away left. Bishop is there, battling with the shadows. He'll make the catch, two gone. The first five men in the stopper lineup retired, and here comes the designated hitter, Brent Gillespie. Gillespie hitting 375 with two home runs and six RBIs. He went deep in last night's ball game. He went back to back with Chris Quitzer. Quitzer, a three-run bomb in last night's game, and Gillespie, the solo shot to follow. Here's the first pitch to Gillespie from Neil Lang. 
Lesby Tanks on the outside corner. A two-seam fastball came back to the outer edge, and it's nothing in one. Lang in his second start with the stockade throws on an 0-1, and Gillespie is out in front of the curveball. No balls and two strikes, and right now the stoppers, who are the best offense in the league, Neil Lang on the worst pitching staff in the league is fooling him left and right. Here he is on nothing and two. Gillespie tanks a called strike three on the outside corner. Six up, six down against Neil Lang here to open the ball game. We're through two. It's the stockade five, the stoppers nothing. Zane Gelfman will lead us off in the top of the third inning. He led off the top of the second, reaching on an air by the shortstop. Stoppers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partner. Pitch on the inside corner for strike one. It's funny how the game is cyclical like that. One month you can be on fire, pounding the strike zone or hitting everything in sight, and all of a sudden the calendar turns over. And it's like you got slapped in the face. Here's his 3-1 pitch to Gelfman. On the ground to shortstop, Barrios trying to redeem himself. He'll collect it and throw across. One out. <laughs> One out, nobody on. Here's Taylor Zutenhorst, the first baseman. He bounced to Romero at second. He's 0 for 1. Stompers trail 5-0. Here's Taylor Zutenhorst. Connor Arnold out of the windup with nobody on. One out. Slight breeze blowing in over center now. The first pitch. On the ground to first. Quitzer's there. Down to one knee. He flips to Arnold. Two out. 
And Connor Arnold, who needs a shutdown inning in the worst way possible after allowing the five runs in the second. Here's the catcher, Kozak, who started the offensive torment of Arnold in the second inning with a two-run home run to left. First pitch to Kozak from Connor Arnold. On the outside corner for strike one. You'll be able to tell when Connor Arnold is feeling good tonight if he ever gets to that point. And if he's starting to get into a groove, he'll start mixing up the wind-ups to the stack eight hitters. The 0-1 is a little bit high, one ball and one strike. And what I mean by that is he has that turn where he turns his backside toward the hitter so you can read the number. Hubbard in center field can read the chest of his jersey, and then he has the quick pitch where he'll go no leg kick whatsoever. He throws on one and one. Kozak breaks his bat, soft dribbler back over the mound. Barrios will barehand the throw. What a play by Pedro Barrios. Barrios charging, he barehands and throws Kozak out in a one, two, three shutdown inning for Connor Arnold. We go to the last of the third. Bottom third of this. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State of the art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community oriented and family owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word mice. Bottom third of the lineup, Barrios, Molinari, and Romero against Neil Lang, who's retired the first six stoppers he's faced in the game. Barrios got the stoppers' offense into it last night. A three-run shot to straightaway center in Vallejo, which is a pretty decent poke, by the way. That was his second home run of the year. In his 18th game with the club, Stompers in their 23rd game of the season. Here's the first pitch from Neil Lang. That is high for ball one. Lang only 22 pinches needed so far. That was 23. And they're straight away defensively against Barrios. The third baseman, Gelfman, is a step behind the third base back. Here's the 1-0. On the outside corner to the shortstop, Barrios, and it's 1-1. 250 average for Barrios, two home runs, and 14 runs batted in. Shadows covering the whole infield grass now. The dirt still in the sunlight. Here's the 1-1, one, one, and Barrios lines it right at Martini at short for out one number one. One out, here's the catcher, Daniel Molinari, who has the Patriotic Sox on tonight. The left one, the stripes, red and white. The right one, the stars, blue with the white stars. A lot of the Stompers have the patriotic apparel tonight. Fourth of July, fireworks immediately following the game. 
5-0 stoppers trail in the third without a hit yet. 7-up, seven 7-down seven against Neil Lang. Henry Omanya took a no-hitter into the seventh the last time we were here on Tuesday night. Here's the first pitch. Molinari takes strike one. That was against the Napa Silverados. That was Napa night on Tuesday night. Omanya ended that ball game seven innings, two hits. Seven shutout innings, I might add. Oh, and one the count to Daniel Molinari batting from the right side. Here's the pitch, and he takes in the dirt. A ball and a strike. On the stopper catcher, hitting 333. He does have a home run and three RBIs. The home run came here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. Kozak is doing a heck of a job behind the plate, saving our home plate umpire, Dean Poteet, on that 58 foot fastball. Here's the 1 1. Curve ball drops in for strike two. Defensively behind Lang tonight, it's Bishop in left, Rocker in center, Bird in right. Gelfman's at third, Martini's at short, Artson is at second base with Zutenhorst at first and Eric Kozak doing the catching. Lang's 1-2 delivery. Inside and low with a breaking ball, 2-2. Two two. Majority of left field in the shadows. Rocker in center and Bird in right in the bright sunlight. Warm night here in Sonoma. The 2-2 to Molinari. Broken bat, a little flare over to first. Zutenhort fields on one hop. He runs over and steps on the bag. Here's the second baseman racing Romero. Trying to get the first stopper hit. Trying to become the first stopper base runner of the game the first time through the lineup. So far, eight up, eight down against Neil Lang, who has struck out two, DeAngelis and Gillespie. One looking and one swinging. Five nothing, Sopper's trail in the last of the third. Rocker's very deep in center against Romero, the first pitch from Lang. Checks his swing and takes a fastball up above the strike zone. So for Lang, the first time through the lineup, only four first pitch fastballs, but he's retired everybody up to this point. Here's his 1-0. Romero takes a curveball for strike one. The Salina pitching staff, a 6.77 ERA against. They allow opponents to hit 287. The 1-1. Romero takes another curveball in the outside corner for strike two. The stoppers offensively hit 283. They lead the league in batting average, OPS, slugging percentage, on base percentage, RBIs, home runs, and runs scored. So far kept off the bases against Lang in the first two and two thirds. Here's his one two pitch to Romero. Swung on and missed strike three. Perfect for Neil Lang the first time through the lineup against the Stompers tonight with three strikeouts. We go to the top of the fourth. Bishop, Rocker, and Bird, eight, nine, one hitters. First Alina coming up. Stoppers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case, PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and 
Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Bishop Rocker Bird 891 against Arnold. The first pitch is outside with a fastball for ball one. Five runs against Arnold in the second, just one of them were earned. On the other side, Lang perfect through three, the 1 0 pitch. Rolled foul down the first baseline. It's one and one. San Rafael beats Vallejo five to one over at Wilson Park. And so right now only sit four and a half games back of the Stompers for first place. Arnold throws on one and one to Bishop. Line down the right field line. That is foul by four feet. Wasn't hit all that hard off the end of the bat of Cody Bishop. It was a soft liner, but it fell foul, so it's one and two. Right now, the stockade, 11 and a half games back, 10 games under 500 at 7 and 17. Stompers at 18 and 5 and have won six straight. Here's the one two pitch from Connor Arnold in the dirt with a changeup. Arnold just two strikeouts in the first three innings and one walk, one hit by pitch. The only blemish was that second inning in which Salina put up five. Two and two to Cody Bishop. Here's the pitch. Popped up down the left field line, moving over in foul territory. Rob DeAngelis toward the sidewall. He will run out of room. Two and two the count. Bishop staying alive. He grounded to Barrios at short. He's 0 for 1. Shadows reaching Quitzer over at first base. Part of the right side of the infield on the dirt now. Shaded. Here's the 2-2 pitch again to Bishop. Fouls it straight back. Arnold went with a changeup. Stompers 3-1 and one against the Salina Club. The only loss was on opening night. A final score of 9-4. Biggest crowd of the season tonight on 4th of July. Many of us excited for the fireworks post game, but also some of us excited for the stomper offense to show up tonight. Here's the 2-2. Slider stays outside and the count is full on Cody Bishop. Chuck Rocker's on deck. The 8-9-1 spots here in the 4th for Salina against Connor Arnold. Trying to get in some sort of a group tonight. Here's his payoff. Bishop hits it in the air to left. DeAngelis going back. It is carrying and it is gone. Over everything in left center. And Cody Bishop goes the other way for his fourth home run of the year. It is 6 nothing Salina. Connor Arnold having similar struggles to what Nick Barnice had on the hill last night. Barnice was in sharp in that game. He only went five and a third, somehow squeaked out with the win after allowing seven runs. Here's Chuck Rocker. So the leadoff home run here in the fourth for Cody Bishop. It's six nothing, Salina. The first pitch to Rocker. The fastball high over ball one. Arnold, who has been almost around the plate too much tonight. After a 1-2-3 third, the leadoff home run here in the fourth and the slider misses outside. It's 2-0 to Chuck Rocker. Connor Arnold, is there such a thing as throwing the ball over the plate too much? His 2-0 pitch is inside, three balls and no strikes. I feel like it gets to a point where you are throwing too many strikes to the ball over the plate too much. You don't want to miss too much, obviously, but if you keep throwing balls over the heart of the play and they keep swinging at them, good luck as the 3 was in for strike one. Three and one the count on Chuck Rocker. Here's the pitch from Arnold. Inside ball four. And we'll have to see how much longer Zach Pace waits to get somebody up in the bullpen. Did not think that he would have to go to the bullpen this early with the pitcher of the month in the month of June on the mound tonight. 
But we're in a whole nother month. It's July. And Arnold looks like a completely different pitcher. Here's the 71st pitch from Connor Arnold. That's a changeup in for strike one on the leadoff man, Justin Bird. So the home run and the walk has opened us here in the fourth. It's nothing in one on Justin Bird. He's walked, driven in a run on a single, and scored. Spinning a throw to first, not in time. Rocker who will run. He stole a base in the second. Arnold peers in, now at the belt. The 0-1, there goes Rocker. The pitch is inside, throw down to second base. is right on the money on one hop, and Barrios cannot handle it. Rocker steals his second base of the game. One ball and one strike to count. Another at bat with runners in scoring position for Salina tonight, and we're only in the top of the fourth. Arnold's 1-1 pitch. Squaring around and bunting it down the third baseline. Foul it is Bird, and it's 1-2. Pitch count up above 70 for Arnold, and this could possibly be his last inning. If he finishes, runner at second, nobody out. One run in this inning already on the home run. The one-two is swung on and missed. Change up from Arnold gets Bird swinging. One out, third strike out of the game for Connor. Here's the second baseman, Omar Arntzen. He's one for two, doubled and scored a run. Drove in a run in the second. Arts in right-handed hitting, second baseman. Rockers at second. One out. He looks to second. The first pitch. And instead, a throw back to second, in which Rocker walks lackadaisically back to the bag. Throw is not in time. No count on Arts, and he's one for two. Artson digs back in, right side. Arnold stares in, gets a sign from Molinari, now set at the belt. He looks to Rocker at second base, the first pitch. Artson bunts it left side, rolling in to foul territory over the third baseline. Arnold picks it up in foul territory, and the count is 0-1. 6 nothing Salina, top of the fourth. The home run by Cody Bishop. The second home run allowed by Connor Arnold in the ballgame. Nothing and one the count to Arts in the second baseman. Luis Martini on deck. Rocker leads from second. He walked and stole second base. Arnold looks to second once and deals. Fastball on the outside corner for strike two. And that pitch is about the best one we've seen thrown from Arnold. When you're combining the velocity and the location, 90 mile an hour fastball on the outside, black at the knees. Toughest pitch for a pitcher to throw is that Fastball low and away and is spotted up exactly where you want it. Arnold did it there, and it's 0-2 on Omar Artson. Only in the top of the fourth. Arnold steps off, looks to second, now retoes from the first base side. Everybody deep around the infield. Romero keeping Rocker close at second. Moving in and out. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. Artson cannot hold up the swings. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Connor Arnold. He now has four, two out here in the fourth, and that brings up Luis Martini.
Here's Martini. He's reached both times an RBI single and a hit by pitch. Martini right-handed hitting shortstop. Arnold trying to get out of this fourth inning, only allowing the one run. He deals the first pitch to Martini. That's popped up. Short center out goes Romero. On comes Hubbard. Romero calling for it. He'll make the catch. That ends the inning, but Salina gets a run on a hit. The home run by Cody Bishop to straightaway left. It's 6-0. We go to the home half of the fourth. Top of the lineup for the Stompers against Neil Lang. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. The second time through the order for the Stompers tonight against Neil Lang, who has not allowed anybody to reach. Nick Gata will be the first man to try and get on base against Lang here tonight. He hit a ball to left pretty well his first time up, and Cody Bishop in left field took an extra base hit away from Gata. Bishop going back on the ball. He leaped and made the catch. So Gata's 0 for 1. Here he stands in against Lang. Left on left matchup, the first pitch. High and inside, and look out, Nick Gata. Neil Lang buzzes the light tower, and the count is 1-0. and And Gata, who has a brand new bat for tonight's game. A pretty candy red finish for Gata. He says, you know, it's 4th of July. I have to go with the red bat tonight, right? He also couldn't decide on the arm sleeve, the 1-0 pitch. High with a fastball, two balls and no strikes. Gata was in the dugout before the game saying, do I wear this arm sleeve or do I wear this arm sleeve? If I wear the red, white, and blue one, it's red, white, and blue, and it's patriotic. But if I wear the solid blue and I have the red tape on the right arm, then when you look, it's red, white, and blue. As he takes the fastball for strike one because he has the, right, the red tape on the right wrist, then the jersey's white, and the blue arm sleeve on the left arm. So it's red, white, and blue when you're looking at him from left to right. So he went with that look tonight. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Gotta lines it on one hop to Martini Edge short. He'll pick it, throw to first, and 10 straight retired by Neil Lang to open the ball game. Gata has hit the ball twice. Nothing to show for it. Here's Miles Williams, who's licking his chops after just getting under a ball his first time and flying to center. And if you're Neil Lang and you leave a curveball up here to Miles Williams, nobody knows how far it could go. Lang's first pitch to Williams. Curveball misses inside. One ball and no strikes. Lang three strikeouts so far in the game. Ten straight retired to open the ball game for the left-hander from Concordia University, Irvine, the 1-0. And Williams hits it down the right field line, and it will slice out of play, and it's 1-1. One one. This offense during the six-game win streak hitting over 300. Nineteen doubles, 
and nine home runs in that span as Miles Williams singles into left, and he's the first man to reach against Neil Lang in the ball game. Perfecto broken up through three and a third. So Lang goes one time through the lineup without allowing a base runner, and Miles Williams has the first stopper hit, a base hit to left. So now the rest of the stopper hitters can take a deep breath as Rob DeAngelis will go to work against the left-hander, and the stoppers trail 6-0 here in the last of the fourth. Rob DeAngelis, the kid from Staten Island, went down on strikes against Lang his first time at the plate. Williams leads from first. One out. Lang out of the stretch for the first time tonight. He misses outside for ball one. So we'll see Lang out of the stretch for the first time, and we'll see what he can do if he can keep the same success. Some pitchers, even at this level, find throwing out of the stretch terribly uncomfortable. Here's his 1-0, and DeAngelis takes a big swing and comes up empty. 1-1 one one the count with Williams at first after the one-out single here in the fourth. Stompers in a 6-0 hole. Five in the second, one in the fourth for Salina. The 1-1 one, one pitch. DeAngelis hits a curveball into center field. On comes Rocker quickly. He'll make the catch. So DeAngelis hit it right on the screws, but right at Rocker. Two out. Here's Dondre Hubbard. Hubbard can get something going here. He popped up to Taylor Zutenhorst over at first in foul territory his first time. He's 0 for 1. Hubbard with the blue bat tonight. He has the red batting gloves. The red cleats tonight. So all red, white, and blue for Dondre Hubbard. Against the left-handed Neil Lang, this is a good matchup for Hubbard, who has tons of power. The first pitch. Hubbard checks his swing on a ball in the dirt. Kozak blocks it up to second base, goes Miles Williams. Williams reads the ball in the dirt. He has a stolen base. One ball and no strikes to count on Dondre Hubbard, a man in scoring position now. Hubbard this year with men in scoring position, 378 average, six home runs in 29 RBIs. He leads the league in home runs with nine. He has Williams at second with two out. The stopper's trying to get on the board here in the fourth, trailing 6 nothing. Here's the 1-0 pitch from Neil Lang. Fastball hit in the air to left. That's number 10 for Dondre Hubbard. The stopper's around the board. Nobody even moved defensively for Salina. Dondre Hubbard with his 10th home run. He's driven in 36 now. That home run is brought to you by Epicenter. Make your next family event an epic one at Epicenter. Hubbard launches a two-out, two-run home run to straightaway left over everything. An absolute laser off the bat of Dondre Hubbard who has now hit safely in 17 straight games, and he has gone deep two games in a row. Went deep to straightaway center in Vallejo last night. It's a two-run bomb here. It's now 6-2, to two, and the stopper offense has come to life here in the fourth. After going 10 up, 10 down to start the ball game, Williams singled, and then after DeAngelis hit a ball on the screws to Rocker in center, Hubbard launches his 10th bomb of the season. So here's Chris Quitzer. He hit a ball to left his first time. He's 0 for 1. <laughs> Quitzer stands in, left-handed hitter against the lefty Neil Lang. The first pitch. Way outside for ball one. So the stopper offense finally on the board after it seemed like we didn't know what was going to happen tonight. The 1-0 pitch. 
Quitzer tops it down the third baseline. It hits the lip, picking it. Gelfman, the throw to first is not in time, and Chris Quitzer has an infield single. He just topped it softly up the third baseline, and with Gelfman shifted over for Quitzer to pull way off the line at third, he had no shot at throwing him out. So Chris Quitzer, after his best offensive night of the year, last night going four for five, and when you're hot, hits like that will just fall in. Here's Brent Gillespie. Gillespie's 0 for 1. He struck out his first time up on three pitches against Lang. Quitzer, who is over at first hands on the knees, and now the trainer will come out and look at him. And now Zach Pace will come over from third. So Quitzer, who knew he had to get down the line quickly, sprinted down the first baseline, may have hit the bag funny. We weren't looking at the time, and Quitzer is talking to Pace and the Stompers training staff. So we're on the road tomorrow night in San Rafael at 6.30, and then back here for Pride Night on Saturday, 6.05 first pitch. Dondre Hubbard, the two-run home run here this inning. Got the Stompers on the board. And Quitzer is still being talked to. Brent Gillespie's a hitter with Quitzer at first and two out. <laughs> See if they leave Chris Quitzer in the game. He's not showing signs of where the injury might be or the soreness. You know Quitzer... If you know him, you know he doesn't want to come out of this game. The Stompers have Jacob Barfield, who could come off the bench. And it looks like Quitzer will be taken out of this game, so Jacob Barfield will come in. Jacob Barfield will pinch run over at first base, and Quitzer is out of the game. So Barfield will pinch run. He'll go over and play first base. Defensively for the Stompers in the top half of the fifth. But right now it's Brent Gillespie with Barfield at first. Two out. Here's the first pitch. Gillespie takes a breaking ball. That gets away from Kozak and Barfield into the game right away. He slides into second base safely. A late slide. That'll be a pass ball by Eric Kozak. The count is one ball and no strikes on Brent Gillespie. So Barfield immediately into the game, and he forgot how to slide. <laughs> he slid and he was about two feet away from the bag. And he has to be careful. Runner at second, two out for Gillespie. Stopper's trail six to two. Here's the 1-0. -oh. Gillespie takes a big hack and comes up empty, and it's one. We would like to thank our community Gillespie this year, runners in scoring position, hitting 429, a home run in five RBI. He's three for seven, so a small sample size. But he's gotten the job done. He'll try and shorten up here against Lang with the lefty on the hill and a 1-1 count, two out. Barfield at second, the pitch. Curveball outside, two and one. Gillespie, the designated hitter, the left-handed power bat that the Stompers needed. Hubbard, of course, the right-handed power bat. Quitzer, the lefty, provides some power as well. But Brent Gillespie, a big power bat, hitting 375 with two home runs. Lang's 2 1 pitch. Gillespie tied up inside on the fastball, and it's 2 and 2. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two runs in this inning for the Stompers, and Barfield's out at second base. Lang looks into Kozak, the left-hander set. He deals on two and two. Gillespie does not chase the curveball outside and low, and the count is full. Pedro Barrios is on deck. Gillespie on three and two. Digs back in. Lang toes from the third base side. 
Left-hander agrees with Kozak, now set at the chest. His payoff pitch to Gillespie. Swung on and missed, strike three. Gillespie down on strikes, but the Stompers get two runs on three hits. The Dondre Hubbard two-run blast to left, and the Stompers are on the board. It's six to two. We go to the fifth. Middle third of the order for Salina when we come back. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma and social media support is provided by Word Mice. Four, five, six for Salina here in the top of the fifth against Connor Arnold, who has thrown 78 pitches to this point. His offense got a pair in the last of the fourth on a Dondre Hubbard two-run homer. And the offense will have to continue to come to life against Neil Lang. If they want to come back in this game, Lang, who retired the first 10 he faced. So now it's Wohler, Gelfman, Zutenhorst against Connor Arnold. His first pitch is below the knees, one ball and no strikes. San Rafael beat Vallejo 5-1 over at Wilson Park in Vallejo. Arnold's 80th pitch of the night. Tie in away for ball two. Stompers who have only lost twice here at home. They're 11 and two. The 2-0 pitch. Yanked down the right field line, foul, and the count is two and one. The 2-1 pitch. Line foul again down the first baseline off the bat of Wohler, and the count is two balls and two strikes. Wolder's 0 for 2, he bounced to Quitzer at first base and he struck out Barfield after coming on to pinch run for Chris Quitzer who injured himself. The quick pitch on 2 and 2 popped up out of play off to the left. Quitzer who beat out an infield single injured himself on the play so Barfield came in to pinch run and now he'll play first base so it's got a Barrios Romero Barfield around the infield. Here's the 2-2 pitch from Arnold to Gelfman. Bowler, that is, outside, and the count is full. Gelfman is on deck. Two walks and a hit by pitch for Arnold allowed in this game with four strikeouts. Not the sharpest night for the right-hander tonight, and he deals on three and two. High and away, ball four. A leadoff walk for Jacob Wohler here in the fifth, and here is Zane Gelfman. (laughs) 
Runner at first, nobody out here. Zane Gelfman with a runner at first after the walk. Just the third walk allowed by Connor Arnold. And his first pitch is a slider on the inside corner for strike one. Gelfman 0 for 2. He reached on an error in the second and scored and then bounced to Barrios at short. So he's hit both balls in play to Barrios. One he booted, one he threw him out. Nothing in one the count after the first pitch slider. Here's the 0-1. Broken bat. Leaping has got at 30. Makes the catch. Nick Gata, who timed it perfectly. Gelfman busted the bat, and he lines it softly into the leaping glove of Goddard, third for the first out. Here's Taylor Zutenhorst. He's bounced to second and bounced to first. He's 0 for 2. Arnold's first pitch is high and away with a fastball. 1-0 and the count. Wohler with a short lead over at first, not very fast. Arnold's 1-0 pitch to Zutenhorst. In the dirt with a changeup, 2-0. The offense is going to have to get the Stompers back into the game tonight like they did last night. Falling behind 3-0 to Vallejo and then coming back and winning that game an offensive bout 15-10. Arnold falls behind Zutenhorst, 2-0. Here's the pitch. Pass ball outside. Three balls and no strikes. Barrios and Romero. Double play depth. Got a normal position at third. So a big hole on the left side of the infield. Same on the right side of the infield with Barfield holding on the runner at first. 3-0 pitch is high and a four-pitch walk to Taylor Zutenhorst. Fourth walk of the game issued by Connor Arnold. And here's the catcher, Kozak, who went deep earlier in the game. The 7-8 spots, Kozak and Bishop, the two home runs for Salina tonight. And here comes pitching coach Mike Nunez. Left-hander Luke Larita is up in the bullpen. Connor Arnold will await the visit from Nunez. Ninety-one pitches for the right-hander to this point, and the lefty Luke Larita is throwing in the stopper bullpen. A six-two game in the top of the fifth, with runners at first and second, and one out. With Kozak coming up, who took Arnold deep the first time he faced him, and then he grounded to short. So the whole infield has joined the conversation now. Dean Poteet will take the walk. He'll come up the back side of the mound and break up the meeting on the mound. And now Poteet, who steps between. Romero and Arnold. Poteet saying, we need to go. Look, look, Mike Nunez, we have fireworks to watch after the game, and your mound visits can't be that long. That's probably what Dean Poteet said. First and second one out, Eric Kozak, the catcher. Stands in. He has a home run, a two-run shot. He's one for two. Connor Arnold looks to second, his first pitch. Kozak takes a big swing and comes up empty on a fastball that tailed inside. And the count is nothing in one. Owen won the count. Arnold looks to second. Here's the pitch. Kozak takes a fastball for strike two. First and second, one out. Kozak, the catcher, the seven hitter, with a chance to add on for Salina here in the fifth with the left hander Luke Larita throwing in the stopper bullpen. And of course, nobody up for Salina. The 0 2 pitch from Connor Arnold. Swung on and missed, strike three. Fifth strikeout of the game for the right-hander. Two gone here in the fifth. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean. And here comes Zach Pace with the left-hander Cody Bishop coming up who took Arnold deep the last time. Pace will take the walk to the mound, look down to the bullpen. He has not made the call yet. Larita has been loosening. There's the point to the bullpen, so we'll have a pitching change. 
Arnold lasts four and two thirds. And this pitching change is brought to you by Sonoma Hills Retirement. We'll have it for you when we come back. Luke Larita, the new pitcher for the Stoppers here in the top of the fifth inning, replacing starter Connor Arnold, who went four and two-thirds, allowed five hits. Up until this point, six runs, but the two men on base belong to Connor Arnold. Lou Larita will inherit them. Larita, the 6'2 left-hander from Northridge, California. On the season for Larita, this is his 11th appearance. Uh, he's 2-0 with a 4.11 ERA and 15 and a third. He's allowed... 14 runs, 7 earned on 10 hits, 11 strikeouts, but 21 walks for the left-hander. That has been the only flaw for Larita on the season have been the walks. Out of the left-hander, you'll see a fastball slider and a changeup, and the fastball 90-92. to He hit 94 on the gun in San Rafael last week. So he can get it up there. Wollers at second, Zootenhorst at first, two out. Cody Bishop is the hitter. He went deep his last time. He's one for two. Larita's first pitch. High and in on Bishop. It knocks him down. Or at least out of the batter's box. One ball and no strikes on Bishop. 243, four home runs, nine RBIs. Left on left battle here. Larita trying to get the stompers out of the fifth. Here's the 1-0. High again with a fastball. Two balls and no strikes. Not a good sign initially out of the bullpen for Larita, who struggles with the walks. Falling behind 2-0 to Cody Bishop, who went opposite field for the home run his last time, and it cleared everything and left. Larita, the left-hander, set at the belt. Here's his 2-0 pitch. Fastball in for strike one. Stompers have some good arms out of the bullpen. Lorita, the only lefty on the pitching staff. That is starters and relievers all together. He looks to second and he throws on two and one. Bishop takes a fastball for strike two on the outside corner. So now... Larita's a pitch away from getting out of this fifth with not allowing a run to score. And Connor Arnold, who is on the top step, would love for that to happen. Six runs against Arnold, two of them earned. Larita wants Molinari to go through the signs one more time. The left-hander set, and Bishop calls time. Chuck Rockers on deck. Larita would prefer not to face him this inning. The left-hander readies. First and second, two out, two balls and two strikes the pitch. Popped up and out of play, straight back. Mm -hmm. 
for the Stockade at 7-17. Seven and 17. They've lost two in a row and have won just three out of their last ten. They come into Sonoma tonight and lead the stopper 6-2 in the top of the fifth. Lorita deals on two and two. Bishop pokes it foul off to the left. Hubbard in center is way over toward the gap. And Miles Williams in right field is over toward the right center field gap with Bishop going the other way for a home run his last time. So a lot of room down the right field line with Williams about 110 feet off the line. Right center field also open and deep in the gap with Hubbard shading toward left center. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on him, strike three, and Larita gets out of the inning without allowing a run. Larita comes in out of the bullpen and strikes out Bishop, and we're halfway home here tonight. It's the Stompers trailing. This is Alina Stockade 6-2, bottom third of the Stomper order when we come back. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. Pedro Barrios will lead us off in the bottom of the fifth inning. Barrios, Molinari, Romero, 7-8-9. The Stoppers trail 6-2. Neil Lang out there on 54 pitches through four innings. He's allowed two runs on three hits. Both runs and all three hits coming in the bottom of the fourth. Madandre Hubbard, two-run home run, the only offense for the Stompers tonight. Here's the first pitch to Pedro Barrios. He takes a curveball for strike one. That pitch number 55 for Neil Lang. Connor Arnold, who was knocked out of the game after four and two-thirds. The book is closed. Six runs, two earned, five hits, five strikeouts, and four walks for the right-hander. The 0-1. Curveball line foul down the third baseline. And it's nothing in two. Owen 2 on Barrios with Molinari on deck against Neil Lang, who is perfect through three and a third. Now he throws on Owen 2 to Barrios. Change up in the dirt. One ball and two strikes. San Rafael victorious tonight over Vallejo, five to one. Barrios digs in right side the shortstop. Lang deals on one and two. Outside, two balls and two strikes to Barrios. Four strikeouts for Lang, no walks. The 2-2 pitch to Barrios. Curve ball hit on the ground to short. Martini will field. He'll scoop it up. The throw to first. One out. Here's Daniel Molinari. He grounded to Zootenhorse at first. 
So he's 0 for 1. Molinari getting the start behind the plate tonight. And for him this year, that is his sixth start. Bronson Butcher has started the other 18. Molinari at 333, he's 0 for 1. And now we'll face Neil Lang with one out here in the bottom of the fifth. Stars in stripes, socks for Daniel Molinari. Here's the first pitch from Lang. Fouled straight back, he took a big cut. Got a piece, and it's nothing in one. Five in the second, one in the fourth for Salino. Two in the fourth for the Stompers on the Hubbard home run. Just three base hits. For the Stompers, a Williams single, the Hubbard home run, and a Quitzer infield single. Molinari calls time. Lang taking too long. About thinking one the count. Molinari climbs back in. Wind blowing toward left center now, out toward center field. The 0-1 pitch. Molinari pops it foul. No balls in a strike on the Stompers catcher. Molinari taking his time getting back in the box here against Neil Lang in an 0-2 count. Left-hander kicks and fires. Lined into right center field. That'll get down for a base hit. Molinari a one-out single here in the fifth. And that brings up Rayson Romero. Romero down on strikes his first time against Lang. That ended the third. Trying to flip the lineup back over to the top. Six two. Stockade lead here in the last of the fifth. Laying back out of the stretch, the position in which he surrendered the home run to Hubbard. Here's the first pitch. Romero takes outside. One ball and no strikes. One and another count. Molinari is over at first, and for a catcher, he runs pretty well, but he doesn't have that good of speed as Romero takes a breaking ball in the dirt. For Molinari this year, he has not recorded a stolen base, and he likely will not go with the stomper offense struggling against Lang tonight. Romero batting at only 115, but the on base percentage at 343. Lang at the belt, he looks to first and deals on 2-0, and, oh, and Romero pops it up. Shallow left, the shortstop Martini goes out, on comes the left fielder Bishop. He'll make the catch, two out. Here's the leadoff man, Nick Gatto, with Molinari at first. Two out after that fly out by Romero. Gatto, who leads the league in walks, and on base percentage at 524. We haven't seen him be very selective tonight. He swung on the second pitch of the bat his first time and then grounded to short and a 2-1 count in the fourth, so he's 0 for 2. First pitch from Lang. Got a squares around, takes a curveball for strike one. Got a left-handed hitter. Playing third base for Zach Pace tonight, the 0-1 pitch. Curveball misses inside, 1-1. One one. Gata, who has a new bat tonight, we talked about it earlier. He said he got it from his older brother, Cade, who is a professional baseball player as well, who has a friend in the baseball world that lives near Louisville. Pitches outside, 2-1-1. So Gata with the new Louisville slugger tonight. It actually belongs to a St. Louis Cardinal. It says St. Louis Cardinals on the barrel, and it has a signature, and we asked God, who's the signature? He said it's, I don't know. Here's the 2-1 pitch. On the outside corner, 2-2. Two and two. So God doesn't know whose bat he's using, but it looks cool. It's red for the 4th of July, so he went with it. 
Two balls in, two strikes on Gata with Molinari leading from first, two out here in the fifth. Stompers trail by four. Lang's pitch. Gata pops it, shallow left. Coming on is Bishop, and the inning is over. Stompers, no runs on a hit. They strand Molinari at first. We're through five. Stompers baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Nine one two for Salina here in the top of the sixth inning. Chuck Rocker will lead things off. Rocker, Bird, and Artson in a six two stockade lead. Luke Larita back to the mound. He ended the fifth inning, striking out Cody Bishop with runners at first and second in relief of Connor Arnold, who went four and two third six runs two earned against him on five hits and five strikeouts. So Larita, who has struggled with the walks this year, comes in to face the lefty Bishop, strikes him out, and now he's back out for the sixth. Right-hander up in the stomper bullpen. That is Marshall Schill, the sidewinder. He's getting loose. Zach Payne says he wanted the lead to grow any more than four for the stockade here in the sixth. The first pitch to Rocker is high. One ball and no strikes. Rocker's 0 for 1, he bounced to short and Barrios booted it and then came around to score. Also walked in this game. Larita out of the windup, here's the o with the 1-0. Slider hit out of play. One ball and one strike on Chuck Rocker, the center fielder and player manager for the stockade. Larita trying to keep it at 6-2. Schill in the bullpen, just in case. Schill, who got a couple of big outs last night in Vallejo, striking out Aikens with runners in scoring position. Here's the 1-1, a slider above the strike zone. Two and one on Chuck Rocker. 9-1-2 in the sixth for Salina in a 6-2 ball game. Stompers trail, Larita's pitch. On the inside corner with a fastball, two and two. So Marshall Shield getting hot now, throwing from the mound. Nobody up in the Salina bull, but now a right-hander stands up and starts to loosen just as we say that. Larita's 2-2 two -two to Rocker. Swung on in miss, strike three. Larita has faced two batters and has struck them both out. Rocker strikes out to open the sixth. Here's the leadoff man, Justin Bird. He is one for two. Singled home a run in the second and then later scored. He's walked and struck out. First time against Larita in the ball game for Bird. A left-handed hitter, so left on left battle.
Lorita works out of the windup his first pitch. Bird squares around and takes a slider outside and low. One ball and no strikes on the right fielder. Justin Bird. Here's the pitch. Squares around and takes inside and low for ball two. DeAngelis Hubbard, Williams, Gata, Barrios, Romero, Barfield. Two balls and no strikes on Justin Bird as Larita has now fallen behind after striking out the two batters that he's faced so far. Here's the pitch. Broken bat, soft liner to Romero. He makes the catch. <laughs> the broken bat liner off the bat of Omar Artson for the second out. It split the barrel right in half. Here's Omar Arntzen, he's one for three and an RBI double. And the second, part of that five run second inning for Salina. Arntzen who has gone down looking and swinging tonight. First pinch to Omar Arntzen from the left hander, Luke Larita. Pass ball inside and low in the dirt. Want to know the count? Arnts in right handed hitting second baseman. Larita throws on 1 0. Popped up right side, foul territory, Barfield over into foul ground. He'll make the catch in a 1 2 3 6 for Luke Larita. Four straight retired for the left hander. We go to the home half of the inning. Williams, DeAngelis, and Hubbard for the Stompers. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. We would like to thank our community partners, Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma, and social media support is provided by Word Mice. Miles Williams will lead us off in the last of the six. The Stompers trail six to two. Williams is one for two. He singled and scored a run in the fourth. The only inning that the Stompers have scored, courtesy of a Dondre Hubbard two-run home run. So here's Lang's first pinch to Williams to open the last of the sixth. Curveball on the outside corner starts him for strike one. That was pitch number 72. Out of Lang, Marshall Schill. Still up, it looks like, in the stomper pen. Here's the 0-1. 
Williams takes a breaking ball in the dirt. One ball and one strike. Luke Larita standing now without a jacket on. Here's Lang on one and one to Williams. Breaking ball line foul down the left field line. One ball and two strikes to Miles Williams. Williams trying to get on to open the six with Rob DeAngelis on deck and then Dondre Hubbard to follow. Here's the one, two. Lang deals and Williams takes in the dirt. Oh, the ball in the dirt came all the way back and hit the backstop right by our live mic. You may have heard the reverberation from that. Two balls and two strikes. Williams, a right handed hitter. Against Lang, the lefty. He deals on two and two. High and away, and the count is full. Rob DeAngelis is on deck. This was the part of the stomper order that put up those two runs in the fourth against Lang. Right-hander up for Salina. Nobody throwing right now for the stompers, but lead home is standing along with Ethington down in the pen. The payoff pitch is outside with a curveball, and Miles Williams has walked to open the sixth. First walk issued by Neil Lang in the ball game, and here's Rob DeAngelis. DeAngelis 0 for 2, struck out and fly to center, and the ball he hit to Rocker in center, right on the nose. He's had a tough time against the lefty Lang. Center of the chest, he looks over to first, step off and a throw over, and Williams is back with a head first dive. Miles Williams this year, one stolen base. So not really a threat to steal, especially with the stoppers in the offensive slump that they've been in tonight. Only four hits. Here's the first pitch. DeAngelis takes in the dirt. That skips away from Kozak. Up to second base goes Williams. No throw. Be a wild pitch. One ball and no strikes to DeAngelis with Williams at second. Rob DeAngelis this year, 360, a home run in 11 runs batted in with runners in scoring position. And the Stompers with an opportunity to chip away here in the sixth. One and oh the count, Lang peers in. Now the left-hander set, Williams leads from second. The one oh to DeAngelis. He takes inside, two balls in, no strikes. A four-run game. The middle part of the stopper order trying to bring the offense back. After 15 runs on 13 hits last night, they trail 6-2. Lang throws on 2-0. DeAngelis takes high and away, 3-0. and Three balls, no strikes to count on DeAngelis, who climbs back in the left-handed batter's box. Against the left-hander, Neil Lang, in a 3-0 pitch. Right down the middle for strike one, DeAngelis tanking all the way. Three and one, Williams at second, nobody out in the sixth. The pitch. DeAngelis hits it in the air to left. Bishop going back. He's still trotting back right in front of the wall. He makes the catch. Williams bluffs the tag from second. That's the second at bat in a row that DeAngelis has hit the ball well, but nothing to show for it. He's now 0 for 3. Here comes Dondre Hubbard, and now a mound visit. Will they leave Lang in to face Hubbard, who is the only offense tonight off of the left-hander? <laughs> 82 pinches for Neil Lang to this point. Chuck Rocker, the manager, will come in from center field and join the conversation. 
So Dondre Hubbard could make this a one-run game. He went deep off of Lang his last time. He's talking with Jacob Barfield. Dean Poteet now out to the hill, and he's standing with the stockade trying to break up the conversation. Are they going to leave Lang in the ball game? They will. So Lang will face Dondre Hubbard, and we'll see if that's a good decision or not. Hubbard comes up. He is one for two with that two-run bomb, his 10th of this season. And he'll bat with Williams at second and one out. He could bring the Stompers within two. They'll have to dig and claw and fight for this one tonight. Hubbard stands in. Williams leads from second. One out. Lang, the left-hander set. He looks to second the first pitch. Hubbard checks his swing on a breaking ball in the dirt. He did not go around. One ball and no strikes. Hubbard, who launched the home run back in the fourth to left center. Not one of his high majestic home runs, but an absolute laser off the bat. He's ahead in the count, 1-0. Lang ready. He fires. Hubbard checks his swing, and he can't hold up, and he goes around. It's 1-1. One one. Lang pulled out the change up there to Hubbard. Hubbard sitting on something hard here in a 1-1 one, one count. If he gets a hanger, watch out. The 1-1. One, one. Big swing on a curveball down in the dirt, and it's 1-2. and two. So will Hubbard shorten up and try and punk one the other way, or will he try to put two more runs on the board in a 1-2 count? Williams at second. Barfield's on deck. Stompers trying to put together a string of hits. They only have four tonight. Williams reached on a walk this inning to lead it off. DeAngelis hit a ball right on the nose to Bishop, who caught it in front of the wall and left. Lang set the one-two. Breaking ball lying down the left field line. It hooks foul. We're in the last of the six. The Stompers trail six to two. Hubbard digs back in, a slightly closed stance, raises the bat out in front, now brings it back. Williams leads from second, Lang deals. Hubbard down on strikes. Ball gets away from Kozak, he'll pick it up, throw to first, that completes the strikeout to away. So with two out and a man at second, Jacob Barfield will hit. First time tonight, replacing the injured Chris Quitzer. 243 average for Barfield, five home runs, 15 runs batted in. Second on the team in home runs with five behind Hubbard, who has 10. Well, Barfield, the right-handed hitter, stands in. Lang, his first pitch. Barfield takes a big hack and fouls it out of play. Barfield with men in scoring position this year, 278 with three home runs and 12 runs batted in. Now Dean Poteet will go out and hand deliver a new baseball to the left-hander, Neil Lang. Nothing and one the count on Jacob Barfield. Quitzer ends his night one for two with an infield single. Whole field in shadow now with the exception of the right field wall from right center field over to the foul pole. 
The wall is lit up, but that's about it. Now Kozak wants to go out and talk to Lang. So Barfield, who usually calls time once in a bat and likes to take a couple of extra seconds, will get a longer break between pitches here as Kozak goes out to talk to Lang, and now the meeting is over. The count is nothing in one on Jacob Barfield. Williams walked to open the inning. DeAngelis fly to the wall and left, and then Hubbard struck out on a ball in the dirt. 0-1 oh, on Barfield. Here's the pitch. Curveball taken high, 1-1. One one. The Stompers just one for four with runners in scoring position tonight. The Hubbard home run, and really haven't had that many at-bats with runners in scoring position tonight. A team that hits over 300 with them in scoring position. He looks to second, the 1-1. One, one. Barfield takes a curveball in the outside corner for strike two. A 6-2 game in the sixth. Man at second, two out, one and two, the count to Jacob Barfield. A packed house tonight on 4th of July. Barfield, the open stance. Lang deals on one and two. Barfield checks his swing on a changeup in the dirt, and the count evens at two balls and two strikes. They appeal, it did not go around. Lang pulled out the changeup, and Barfield did not offer. They're deep all the way around. Straight away on the infield. Barfield awaits the 2-2 pitch. Rests the bat on the shoulder. Lang with a long look in. Barfield calls time. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Williams leads from second. Nobody able to get him home yet. Lang's delivery. A curveball. Barfield rolls it over to short. Fielded by Martini. The throw on the run to first is in time, and that ends the threat here in the sixth. Stompers get a base runner. Cannot score them. No runs, no hits. They leave one. We go to the seventh. Middle third of the order with the Stompers trailing by four. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case, PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Luis Martini will lead it off for Solana in the top of the seventh. Three, four, five against Luke Larita. She'll back up in the bullpen, throwing lightly. If it wasn't for the errors in the second inning, you could say this would be a 
2-1 stopper lead. Errors have plagued this team this year. The first pitch to Luis Martini. He squares around and drops a bunt down in foul territory. It'd be interesting to see how many errors the stoppers have committed combined in their five losses this year. Errors have been a big part of those losses. And our stat man, Lucas San Giorgi's on it right away. He's multitasking tonight, a very busy man sitting next to me. Here's the 0-1. Martini hits it in the air to center, not very deep. Hubbard comes on. He'll make the catch, one away. So it may take us about this half an inning to get that answer for you. Thankfully for Lucas, the Stompers will make it easy. He only has to tally up the errors in five games this year. Stoppers at 18 and 5. Pinch hitter for Jacob Wooler will be Cosimo Canella. Canella will pinch hit for Wooler, who ends the night 0 for 2 with a walk. So Canella, the right hander against Luke Larita. The first pinch out of the windup. Fastball in for strike one. Nothing in one the count, nobody on one out. Canella enters in the cleanup spot of the order. Slightly breezy out on the field, blowing in over right center. Here's the 0-1, and Canella takes high. One ball in, one strike the count. Canella, who is, has the red stirrups tonight with the blue sanitaries underneath, so he's going patriotic with the white cleats, so the red, white, and blue bottom half for Canella. Lorita deals on one and one. Fastball fouled straight back to the screen, one and two. Six runs for Salina. Two earned. Here's the one-two pitch. Canella takes inside a two-seam fastball, misses just above the letters. Two and two the count on Cosimo Canella. Nobody on one out. Left-hander working out of the windup against the pinch hitter. The pitch. Fouled away off to the right. Still two balls in two strikes. We're in the seventh in a four-run game. Stompers find themselves behind. The 2-2 pitch. And the dirt in the count is full. So Larita up until this point, who has worked an inning and two-thirds and has not walked anybody. Larita working out of the stretch now. His payoff pitch. Popped up and out of play. The Stompers who have not lost at home since June 4th. That was the third game of the year. Tonight, game number 24. And we are playing on the 4th of July. So it's been a month. The payoff to Canella once again. I ball four. So the first walk issued by Luke Larita with one out here in the seventh. And here comes Aiden Gelfman. Marshall Schill is still up in the stomper bullpen, just awaiting his turn. And if things get out of hand here in the seventh, Zach Pace may turn to Schill. Canella leads from first. Gelfman stands in. He's 0 for 3. Larita's first pitch. Inside, ball one. Gelfman reached on an error by Barrios in the second and scored, then bounced to Barrios in line to God at third. Hubbard's toward left center. 
A 1-0 count to Zane Gelfman, the third baseman. Here's the pitch. Fouls it straight back. A fastball from Luke Clarita, and it's 1-1. One one. The Stompers who are on the road tomorrow in San Rafael for just the second time this year. Then back home on Saturday for Pride Night at 6.05 start. Lorita with a throw over to first. Back in time is Canella. So Luke's, Lucas San Giorgi, who's the fastest stat man in the Pacific Association, has come to the conclusion that in the five losses that the Stompers have this year, they've committed 12 errors. So that's really been the difference. The 1-1 one -one is fouled back to the screen. In tonight's ball game, two errors. Both coming in the second inning and extending that inning. One and two the count. Schill in the pen. Nobody up at the moment for Salina. Larita the left-hander at the chest. He throws on one and two. Gelfman chases a fastball down in the dirt. Third strikeout out of the pen for Larita. Two away in the seventh. Here's Taylor Zutenhorst. Zutenhorst in this ball game, he's 0 for 2. He's also walked. Stompers who have allowed five walks tonight and have struck out eight as a staff. The first pitch from Larita is high for ball one. Luke Larita, who won a CIF championship game for El Camino Real High School at Dodger Stadium in 2012. Here's his 1-0, and student horse takes high. And if you play down in Southern California and you make it to the championship game, as far as the high school ranks go, they play the game at Dodger Stadium, so you get to play in a big league ballpark. And for Larita, he did in 2012 when he helped El Camino Real High School win the CIF championship. Here he is on 2-0. Dutenhorst swings through the fastball, it's 2-1. Runner at first, two out. Barfield holds him on. Infield shifted over. The 2-1 pitch. Zutenhorst takes on the outside corner, 2-2. Two and two. Not shifted over in the overshift, but the shortstop Barrios is up the middle, and Gata is a couple of extra steps off the line at third. Luke Larita, the left-hander from Northridge, California, trying to end this seventh and strand the walk. He set at the belt. He looks to first. Now deals on two and two. Zutenhorst takes outside. Off and running was Canella on the pitch. He'll have a stolen base as the breaking ball missed outside to Zutenhorst and the count is full. On deck is Eric Kozak, the catcher. Schill still throwing in the pen. Man in scoring position now for Salina. With Zutenhorst at the plate, who with his new team does not have any home runs or RBIs. Three and two, Zutenhorst digs back in left side. Larita trying to end the top of the seventh with a man at second. The payoff pitch is high ball four. Both base runners in the inning, courtesy of a walk. Here's the catcher, Eric Kozak. Kozak's one for three with a two-run homer back in the second. And Schill looks like he's ready to go. And here comes Zach Pace. Pace with a slow walk out to the mound. 
And that'll likely do it for Luke Larita, the left-hander, who came in in relief of Connor Arnold, struck out Cody Bishop, struck out three stockade. He's walked two in this inning. Salina has first and second with two out, and Zach Pace, who has not made a move or taken the ball from him yet. He looks down the right field line and taking his time here as Marshall Schill came out of the bullpen gate, but now he goes back. Pace does make the point and make the move, so this pitching change is brought to you by Sonoma Hills Retirement. Out is Luke Larita, in is Marshall Schill. Marshall Schill is the new stopper pitcher here in the seventh, replacing Luke Larita. Schill, the right-hander from Cottonwood, Arizona this year. This will be his 11th appearance of 5-4-0 ERA in 11 and two-thirds. He's allowed 11 runs on seven hits while striking out 13, walking four on 17 hits. So Schill will try and end this seventh with first and second and two out. Eric Kozak is the catcher. He's the hitter. Schill works out of the stretch. He looks to second, his first pitch. Fastball on the ground to short. Barrios is there. He throws to second the short way, and that ends the inning. So Schill gets the ground out to end the seventh, and the Soppers are coming up. Trailing by four. It's stretch time here in Sonoma. Gillespie, Barrios, and Molinari in the last of the seventh. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com.
We're in the last of the seventh. New pitcher for the Salina Stockade is right-hander Ricky Bielski, six foot, three hundred and ninety-pound right-hander from Anaheim, California. This will be his tenth appearance of the season. He has eleven point seven zero ERA in ten innings, fourteen runs, thirteen earned on twelve hits. He's struck out twelve and walked twelve. He'll be the new man to face Brent Gillespie, Pedro Barrios, Daniel Molinari, six seven eight, Neil Lang. Goes six innings on 92 pitches, allows two runs on four hits, five strikeouts, and one walk. So by far the best outing for Lang of the year. Brent Gillespie will lead us off in the last of the seventh. Gillespie tonight is 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Those at-bats are against the left-hander Neil Lang. Now he'll face the righty Ricky Bielski. Big right-hander starts the seventh with a stopper trailing 6-2 to two the first pitch. He hits it in the air to right, not all that hard, right at the right fielder, Bird. So one pitch, one out for Ricky Bielski. Here's the shortstop, Pedro Barrios, with nobody on and one out. Barrios has hit both balls to short. He lined down and grounded out. He's 0 for 2. Stompers only have four hits. Three of them came in the fourth inning. They haven't recorded a hit since the fifth. One pitch, one out for Bielski. Here's his first to Pedro Barrios. He takes a fastball for strike one. Bielski drafted by the Philadelphia Phillies in the 14th round of the 2012 MLB draft out of Servine High School in Anaheim. Spent three seasons in the Phillies organization as Barrios takes strike two. And rookie ball in low A. So three seasons and affiliated ball for Bielski in the Phillies organization. <laughs> Owing to the count on Barrios, here's the pitch. This one going to miss, strike three. Two up, two down on four pinches for the stoppers in the seventh. Here's Daniel Molinari. Molinari is one for two. He has the hit that came outside of the fourth inning, a single in the fifth with one out. He'll face Bielski for the first time. Right-hander up for Salina in the bullpen. First pitch to Daniel Molinari from Bielski. Way outside. One ball and no strikes on Molinari. In a 6-2 game, Stompers trail here in the seventh. On 4th of July, fireworks immediately following the ball game. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Molinari flares it out of play off to the right. A ball and a strike on the stoppers catcher. Two out, nobody on. It'll be Schill in the eighth with nobody up in the stopper pen at the moment. Right-hander throws for the stock eight. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Molinari. He hits it straight back into the screen. One and two the count. Molinari trying to spark something here in the seventh. Molinari calls time. Stompers who have only lost 12 games at home this year. Two games at home this year, not 12. The one two is sprayed foul off to the right. They're 11 and two at home. Three and one against the stockade. One and two on Molinari. Gillespie flying to right on the first pitch he saw, and then Barrios down on three pitches, swinging. Here's the one-two. 
Well, Inari takes a called strike three and a one, two, three, seventh for Ricky Bielski. We'll head to the eighth and a 6-2 lead for Salina. The 8-9-1 hitters coming up. Stoppers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma and social media support is provided by Word Mice. Cody Bishop will lead it off for Salina here in the top of the eighth. The Stompers trail 6-2. to two. And Marshall Schill, who needed only one pitch to get out of the seventh inning. He'll face the 8-9-1 hitters here in the eighth. Bishop, the lefty, one for three with a solo home run to left field. The first pitch from Schill. Starts him with a fastball inside and low. San Rafael won today, so if the Stompers... Cannot complete the comeback. The lead in the Pacific Association will be down to four games. Schill, who works out of the stretch, nobody on, nobody out, the 1-0. Bishop takes outside on a changeup, 2-0. Bishop, left-handed hitter. Awaits a 2-0 pitch from Marshall Schill with Chuck Rocker on deck. Here it is. He hits it in the air left field. DeAngelis goes back. He's at the track, and Bishop has gone deep for a second time. Both the other way, and it's 7-2. Jill gives up the leadoff home run in the eighth, and for the second time, Bishop has led off the inning with a solo home run the other way. He now has five home runs on the year, and here comes Chuck Rocker. Rocker is 0 for 2. He reached on an air, scored a run, walked, and struck out. So Schill will have to settle back into the strike zone here in the eighth. The first pitch is a fastball shot over toward the stopper dugout. The count is nothing in one. Two no doubters off the bat of Cody Bishop the other way, showing some real opposite field power here tonight. On a rather warm night, it was 80 degrees when we started. Now down to 67. Schill deals on 0-1. Rocker swings and misses. <laughs> Nothing into the count on the player manager, Chuck Rocker. Now a 7-2 Salina lead. Rocker in a hole 0-2. She'll likely go to a slider here. Here's the pitch. He does not. He pulls the fastball too far outside. One ball and two strikes. 
We're in the eighth, and the Stompers have six out, outs with which to work to try and make a comeback in this game on 4th of July. <laughs> One and two the count. Schill now set. Molinari sets the target. The one, two. Slider punched in the air. Foul territory, first base side. Barfield over near the side wall. He makes the catch. One out here in the eighth and back to the top of the lineup for Justin Bird. Justin Bird stands in the left side. He's one for three, and he takes a first pitch fastball that misses. Looked like it was right on the corner, but outside says Dean Poteet. One ball and no strikes on Bird. The one hit, a single down the right field line. Scored a run. He later scored. That was back in the second, the 1-0 pitch. Inside this time, 2-0. Marshall Shield, the sidewinder from Cottonwood, Arizona. Hubbard in center over toward the gap in right center field. Shield's 2-0 delivery. Fouled out of play. Two balls and a strike on Justin Bird, the right fielder. Stumpers are 3-1 and one against the Stockade on the season and have not lost since June 26th. Shields 2-1 pitch. High and away. 3-1. and one. And now Connor Leadholm is up in the stomper pen and he has begun to throw lightly. Shill at the belt, his 3-1 pitch to Burt. Inside, ball four. So here comes the second baseman, Omar Artson. Artson is one for four, uh, an RBI double. He's also struck out twice and popped up in foul territory. Man, at first one out in the eighth, 7-2 stoppers trail this one. First pitch from Schill, and Artson squares around and whiffs the bun attempt. 0-1. Oh Schill, who's a rhythm guy on the hill, and as a sidewinder, if you don't have it, it's hard to find it that night. Release point, very crucial for him. The 0-1 pitch on the outside corner. It's nothing and two. So he's way ahead of Artson here with Bird at first and one out. Already a home run in the inning by Cody Bishop the other way. 0-2 the count. Schill. At the belt. Here's the pitch. There goes the runner. It's popped up. Foul territory, first base side. Barfield over. He will run out of room. Stomper offense tonight, just four hits. For Salina, seven runs on six hits. Throw over to first is not in time. So both teams taking advantage. Salina more than the Stompers, who haven't really had much to take advantage of. Lang, who was brilliant. 
Schill on 0-2, the runner goes, it's high. The throw down to second base is in time. They got him. Molinari throws out Justin Bird for the second time tonight. The pitch was taken high and away. The count is one ball and two strikes on Omar Artson. And just like that, Schill is one pitch away from getting out of the eighth. Nobody on, two out, and a one-two count. Marshall Schill to Omar Artson. He set the pitch. On the ground to first, Barfield picks it. Steps on the bag. That ends the inning after having a little trouble with the grounder. One run on one hit for Salina. We go to the last of the eighth. Nine, one, two hitters for the Stompers coming up. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. Nine one two for the Stompers. Romero Gata Williams against Ricky Bielski in his second inning. Needed only nine pitches to retire the side in the seventh, picking up a pair of strikeouts. He'll face Romero Gata Williams. Stompers trail seven two. Romero in tonight's game, 0 for 2, a strikeout, and he flied to the left. So the second baseman from Hawaii will lead us off in the eighth. Stockade tacked on one more in the top half. The Cody Bishop home run, his second of the game. Romero squares around and takes a fastball for a strike. Nothing and one that counts a race in Romero. 9-1-2. Stompers trying to get back into this game in the late innings. Here's the 0-1. High. One ball and one strike. Packed house tonight on 4th of July. Everybody coming for the fireworks post game. Here's the 1-1. High ball two. Also, everybody hoping for the Stompers to... Come back and pull this one out. They need five to tie and have six outs to work with. Bielski's 2-1 pitch to Romero. Popped out of play. And the count is knotted up at 2-2. Two and two. 
Stompers who haven't recorded a hit since the fifth. Got a leadoff walk in the sixth. Since then, seven straight retired by Lang and by Bielski. The right-hander's 2-2 pitch. Curveball misses outside. And the count is full. The payoff pinch to Rayson Romero is hit in the air. Bird in right field makes the catch. One out back to the top of the lineup. Here's Nick Gata. Gata, the leadoff man, is 0 for 3 and Right now, he's reached base in all 22 games that he's played in this year. Hasn't reached tonight. The first pitch from Bielski is high and away. So you must think Gata will probably be selective here, not only for his own selfishness, but just to get a base runner for the Stompers here in the eighth. It all starts with a base runner. Here's the 1-0. Curveball on the outside corner, called to strike, it's 1-1. One Rocker in center toward left center field. Here's the pitch from Bielski. In the dirt, Gata takes. So a 22 game on base streak for Nick Gata, potentially on the line here. He leads the league with 29 walks and he has not walked tonight, surprisingly. Been swinging earlier and counts in this game. He's hit the ball hard twice. Here's the 2-1. That's inside, three and one. Maybe we can talk him into getting on base. In a 3-1 count against Bielski, who has not let a runner aboard yet. The 3-1 pitch is hit in the air to right. Going back on it is Bird. See you later. Got his first home run of the year, and it's 7-3. Nick got his first home run of the year. He's now reached in all 23 games. As that home run is brought to you by Epicenter. Make your next family adventure an epic one. At Epicenter, his first home run. Here's Miles Williams. He's one for two. And the stopper offense with five outs with which to work. Trying to start something here in the eighth. The first pitch to Williams is on the outside corner for strike one. Kozak had to reach for it. He was set up inside. He had to reach across to corral the strike. Here's the 0-1 pitch, and Williams fouls a hanging curveball back to the screen. Nothing into the count on Williams. He has three home runs this year and 13 batted in. One for two in the ball game, a single and a walk. He scored a run back in the fourth. First time the Stompers have scored since that fourth inning. Here's the 0-2 from Bielski. On the outside corner called strike three. Williams down on strikes for the first time tonight and here's Rob DeAngelis with two out. The Stompers tonight have been struck out eight times and only one walk. So Rob DeAngelis at the plate, he's 0 for 3. Hit the ball hard twice tonight, has Rob. He flied to the ball and left and hit one on the screws to Rocker in center. The first pitch from Bielski is a curveball in for strike one. Five in the second, one in the fourth, one in the eighth for Salina. Two in the fourth and one here in the eighth for the Stompers who now trail by four. The 0-1 pitch. DeAngelis flares it out of play off to the left. <laughs> Rob DeAngelis needs some pine tar as he goes back to the on deck circle, circle, grabs the stick of pine tar, lathers the handle of the bat. Now he climbs back in. And an 0 2 count. 
against Ricky Bielski, the right-hander. Here's the pitch. Curveball, broken bat, right back up the middle. That is fielded by Martini behind the bag to throw to first, not in time. Rob DeAngelis has an infield single, and he extends the eighth inning. Here's Dondre Hubbard. He's one for three with a home run. Stompers who lead the league in home runs with 32. Best offensive team in the league trying to make a comeback with only four outs to work with. Hubbard is first time against Bielski. He hits with DeAngelis at first, two away in a 7-3 ball game after the Nick got a home run. Big bats coming up for the Stompers in the eighth if they can continue to roll here in this inning offensively. Bielski out of the stretch. The first pitch. Hubbard takes a breaking ball in the dirt. First time Bielski will work out of the stretch. With DeAngelis at first and two out. 1-0 the count on Dondre Hubbard. Hubbard this year just one multi-home run game. The 1-0. Pulled straight down into the dirt. 2-0 the count. Hubbard who hit his 10th back in the fourth inning. That leads the league by two. Two balls and no strikes. He'll likely get a good pitch here. There goes DeAngelis. The breaking ball is in the dirt. It skips away from Kozak, and DeAngelis slides into second. He didn't see it. But that'll be a stolen base for Rob DeAngelis. And now he's in scoring position in a 3-0 count to Dondre Hubbard. And if I'm Bielski here, I'm nibbling at the corners. I'm not giving Dondre Hubbard anything over the white part of the plate to hit. We'll see if he likes to do that, and they'll just put him on. They won't even face him in a 3-0 count, and now Jacob Barfield will have to take that personally. Bielski fell behind 3-0 to Hubbard, and they'll just put him on, so Jacob Barfield will hit. Five home runs for Barfield on the year. He's 0 for 1 in the ball game. Tying run is on deck. Stompers trying to get there this inning. The first pitch to Barfield. Big swing, and he tried to make it a one-run game. He comes up empty. Five home runs, 15 runs batted in for Barfield, the man from Houston, Texas. With two on and two out, the Stompers just one for four with men in scoring position tonight. The Hubbard home run. Bielski deals on 0-1. Breaking ball in the dirt. Kozak blocks it. One ball in, one strike on Jacob Barfield, the first baseman. 7-3 in the last of the eighth. The one run in the inning, a Nick got a solo shot, extending his on base streak to 23 games. DeAngelis at second, Hubbard at first. Barfield digs in, 1-1 one, one count against Ricky Bielski. Right-hander set. He looks to second and throws. Way outside, 2-1. Two and one. two and one, hitters count for Jacob Barfield. Right-hander awaits the 2-1 pitch from Bielski. Here it is. He lifts it on the infield left side. Into foul territory. Gelfman over battling with the win. He makes the catch right near the third base bag. So the Stompers just get the one run on the Nick. Got a solo shot. We go to the ninth. It's a 7-3 Salina lead. Marshall Schill back to the hill. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by 
Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. And one for five. One for three, that is. Artson's one for five. Martini's one for three with an RBI single and a hit by pitch. Schill in the ninth, his first pitch of the inning. Fastball fouled away. It was Arnold for four and two thirds, Lorena for two, and Schill for the last inning in a third. Trying to close out this game. The stoppers will trail by at least four when we get to the bottom of the ninth. The 0 1 pitch. Slider on the inside corner for strike two. Schill has that slider in the back pocket. Has not gone to it often in this game yet. Nobody up in either bullpen. Marshall Schill with nobody on and nobody out. Fires on 0-2 to Martini. That's outside with a fastball. One ball and two strikes. Approaching three hours here tonight. The 6.05 start right on time. We love that. One and two, the count to Martini. She'll deliver. Found out a playoff to the right. The fireworks here in Sonoma after the game are scheduled to go off at 10. Is it 9.30 or is it 10? We don't know. Your email said 10, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> One and two the count on uh, Luis Martini to open the ninth. Here's the pitch from Marshall Schill. On the ground, one hop. Barrios dives. He can't get it. Lead off single for Luis Martini. Brings up Cosimo Canella. Lead off single for Luis Martini, his second hit of the night. Canella stands in. He has walked. He replaced Jacob Wooler in the seventh inning after Wooler went 0 for 2 with a walk. Schill works with the runner at first, nobody out. His first pitch to Canella. That's ball below the knees. One ball and no strikes. We're in the top of the ninth of a 7-3 game. Salina leads. The Stompers, who have not lost a home game since June 4th, exactly a month ago. That was the third game of the season. Spin and a throw to first, not in time. Shield fires on 1-0 and to Canella. Two seamer in for strike one. Lead off single to Luis Martini after having him down 
in a 1-2 count. Canelo, the cleanup man. Shield looking for a ground ball here in the ninth. With Gelfman on deck. His 1-1 one, one pitch. Slider outside, 2-1. Sellout crowd here tonight of 110,000. Two and one to Canella. Here's the pitch. Out, out of play. Two balls and two strikes to the designated hitter. Short lead at first for Luis Martini, who has stolen a base in this game. Here's the 2-2. Inches off the outside corner with a slider, and the count is full with Zane Gelfman on deck. Three and two, the count to Canella. Marshall looks to first. Now the right-hander at the belt. Here's the payoff. Canelo checks the swing and gets a piece and stays alive. It's still full. Three and two on Canella. The leadoff single for Martini. Gelfman in the on-deck circle. Schill in his third inning of work. Deals on three and two. Canelo takes inside ball four. So two on and nobody out for the third baseman, Zane Gelfman. Nobody up in the stopper pen. Nobody up in either bullpen. Gelfman's 0 for 4. He scored a run. Right-handed hitting third baseman with Martini at second, Canella at first after the walk. Nobody out in the ninth. Shill's first pitch. The slider that misses away. One ball and no strikes on Gelfman. They play him to pull in the outfield, playing for a double play ball on the infield. Spinning a throw back to second base. It is not in time. It's slick. Slips out of the glove of Barrios into short center field, not far enough away for Martini to try and advance. Romero's there to scoop it up. Here's the 1 0 pitch, and Gelfman fouls it straight back. One in, one the count. First and second, nobody out. Top of the ninth, and it seems like we have come to a screeching halt. Schill looks to second. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Gelfman swings to the fastball. It's one and two. One and two, the count to Zane Gelfman with Martini at second after the leadoff single and Canella at first after the walk. Nobody out, 7-3 our score. Shield fires on one and two and Gelfman chases a slider for out number one. First strikeout of the game for Marshall Schill and here comes Taylor Zutenhorst. Right-hander Willie Ethington now up in the stopper bullpen. He's warming very quickly. Zutenhorst is 0 for 2 with a pair of walks. The first pitch from Schill. Swung on and miss. Do the fastball by him. And Schill looking for a little ground ball to get out of this inning with first and second and one out. 
Zunhorst left-handed hitting first baseman against Shilda Riley, the sidewinder. He's set at the belt. He looks to second, and he throws. Zutenhorst takes strike two on the outside corner. Another fastball. <laughs> Nothing and two to Taylor Zutenhorst. Shield coming off a strikeout to Gelfman. First and second, one out. Right-hander from Cottonwood, Arizona. On 0-2 to Zutenhorst. He deals. Swung on him, it's strike three. Three pitch see ya for Marshall Schill. Back to back strikeouts, two out in the ninth. Here's the catcher, Eric Kozak. He's one for four with a home run. Kozak, the two run home run to open the scoring for Salina in the second, in which they put up five runs. It's a four-run game, Stoppers trail. First and second, two out now, and Marshall Schill gets ready to throw the first pitch to Kozak. It's on the outside corner for strike one, and Schill pounding in fastballs through the strike zone here in the top of the ninth. Working quickly now. He looks to second twice. The 0-1. Time was called, Kozak had it granted by Dean Poteet. So the pinch does not count. The count remains one, nothing and one. Marshall Shield trying to end this top of the ninth. The 0-1. Fastball swung on and missed. In and out of the glove of Molinari, and it's 0-2. No balls, two strikes, two on, two out of the ninth. Stoppers trail seven to three. Willie Ethington has now sat down. Schill to Kozak. Auto win two. Way outside. Cody Bishop is on deck. He has gone deep twice in this game. Schill would prefer to leave him there. One and two, the count to the catcher, Kozak. Here's the pitch. Slider high, two and two. A hit and a walk in the inning. A pair of strikeouts from Marshall. Two balls and two strikes the count on Eric Kozak, who stands in from the right side against the right-handed sidewinder, Marshall Schill. He looks to second and deals. Swung on in, missed strike three. Marshall Schill back to back to back strikeouts. He strikes out the side in the ninth. After allowing the single and then the walk, so we go to the last of the ninth. The stoppers need four to tie and five to send everybody home happy. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com.
Brent Gillespie will lead it off in the bottom of the ninth. The Stompers trail seven to three. Max Bitarowski is the new pitcher, the right-hander. He's allowed nine runs on 15 hits in 13 and a third, a 607 ERA. Right, he'll face the 678 hitters, Gillespie, Barrios, Molinari. Right-hander out of the stretch. He works to Gillespie. The first pitch. Gillespie takes on the inside corner, strike one. Brent's 0 for 3 with two strikeouts in the game tonight. He throws the ball to the Nothing in one, the count from Bitterowski to Gillespie. Here it is. Fastball high, one and one. One ball, one strike on Brent Gillespie. Here's the pinch from Bitterowski. Low, two and one. Gillespie, two home runs, six RBIs on the year, came in hitting 375. Two balls and a strike on the left handed hitting designated hitter. Bitterowski's 2 1. High and away, 3 and 1. Three balls and a strike on Brent Gillespie. Bitterowski, only the third man to tank the hill for Salina tonight. Lang went six, allowed two runs. Bielski went two, allowed one run. It's a 7-3 Salina lead. Here's the 3-1 pitch, and Gillespie works a walk. <laughs> Here's Pedro Barrios. Lead off walk for Brent Gillespie, and the stopper is trying to make a comeback. Four to tie, five to win. Nick Kern is on deck, so he'll pinch hit for the catcher, Daniel Molinari. First pinch from Barrios is inside. 1 0. Barrios tonight 0 for 3. Stompers with only six hits. The 1 0 pitch. Barrios takes the strike. Stompers who have not lost here at home since the 4th of June, exactly a month ago. They're 11 and 2 here at this ballpark. 18 and 5 overall. The 1 1 to Barrios. On the outside corner, 1 and 2. One and two, the count, the pitch. Barrios lines it up the middle for a base hit. First and second, nobody out. And they're test running fireworks. The stoppers last night in Vallejo with fireworks going off in the distance scored five runs when fireworks were going off. And now they're trying to make a comeback here in the ninth. Two on, nobody out, and now a mound visit. Nick Kern at the plate. And now we're starting to wonder, we're supposed to have the lights shut off, and we don't know what time yet, but they're test running fireworks, and maybe that was a warning. You probably heard it over our area microphone. Right when the game ends tonight, they'll turn off the lights and everybody will make a, a run for the field. <laughs> There's still a mound visit going on. And if the game is not finished tonight, we're getting word that this will be postponed until the next time that Salina is here. It's 7-3, Salina in the ninth with first and second, nobody out, Nick Kern pinch hitting.
Kern pinch hitting for Molinari, who was one for three. He stands in right side against Max Bitarowski, who looks to second the first pitch. Kern rolls it on the ground to third. Get underneath the glove of Gelfman into left field. Around third is Gillespie. He will score. It's seven to four. <laughs> Air by Gelfman over at third. The run scores. It's seven four. Nobody out. Another pinch hitter, Bronson Butcher, will hit for Rayson Romero. Stompers trying to start some fireworks of their own here in the ninth. It's now a three-run game, and Bronson Butcher's the tying run at the plate. Butcher, the second catcher, and Bitterowski on the hill. Here's his first pitch. Butcher takes strike one. A walk to Gillespie, then the single by Barrios up the middle. Kern breaks his bat on the grounder to third, and Gelfman could not field it. It scored a run. 7-4, home half of the ninth. Butcher with first and second. Nobody out. Here's the 0-1. Benarowski delivers outside. One ball in one strike. The lights will go out right when the ball game ends. So we are forewarning you of the short very quick post game. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Butcher tanks high, two balls in a strike. Two balls in a strike. Benarowski out of the stretch, first and second, nobody out. Here's the pitch to Bronson Butcher. Right-hander pauses, now he deals. Butcher fouls it off, and it's two and two. Still nobody out, we're in the last of the ninth, and fireworks are scheduled to go off soon. The fireworks show here in Sonoma, we don't know when, and the lights have to be out. So if we're unable to finish, this game will be re- resumed the next time the these two teams played but the stompers rallying here in the ninth one run across trailing by three Bronson Butchers the tying run at the plate here's the 2-2 two -two. he fouls it straight back Nick Gata is on deck he went deep his last time he represents the winning run stompers without a walk off win this year Trying for their first on the 4th of July. Here's the 2-2. Butcher's down on strikes for the first out of the inning. Back to the top of the lineup. Here's Nick Gata. Gata, who extended his on-base streak to all 23 games in which he's played this year with a home run in the 8th. Now he bats with first and second and one out, and he represents the tying run. Bitterowski's first pitch. Got to take inside and low, one ball and no strikes. Stompers one for six with men in scoring position tonight. One ball and no strikes. Barrios is at second. Kearns at first. Got of the tying run at the plate. Bitterowski's 1-0. In for a strike, and it's 1-1. One one. Got of the third baseman from San Diego. Stands in, awaits the 1-1 one -one pitch. Two on, one out, bottom of the ninth. Got a call's time. A ball and a strike on Gata. Bitterowski trying to close things out in the ninth. Gotta takes high 2-0. Oh. Two balls and a strike. 
got it who went deep. His last time at the plate, he's one for four, a solo home run to straightaway right. The two one pitch. He takes high, three and one. Three and one the count. Bitarowski set at the belt. His pitch. Ball four. Miles Williams will come to the plate. He represents the winning run. Bases loaded, one out for the stoppers here in the ninth. One run in already. And Miles Williams with the bases loaded and one out and now a mound visit. And it looks like they'll bring in a new pitcher. They'll go to the right-hander. This pitching change brought to you by Sonoma Hills Retirement. And we're going to stay here just in case. We don't know what's going to happen. Bitarowski is out after two-thirds. He allows one run. It was not earned up until this point. New pitcher for the stockade. Will be right-hander Zach Williams. So Williams comes on. Bitarowski goes two-thirds, allows a hit. He walks two and strikes out one. Zach Williams will face Miles Williams. The bases are loaded with one out. And Williams represents the winning run. Stompers who do not have a walk-off this year. Zach Williams, the new pitcher, a 1-5 ADRA. He's allowed two runs, one earned on four hits and five and two-thirds, five strikeouts, eight walks from the right-hander. And we're not sure how much longer this game can continue with the Fireworks scheduled to go off here in Sonoma. And it's not the Stompers putting on the fireworks. It's the city of Sonoma. So we play by their rules. And if it comes to the point to where we have to shut off the lights, this game will be postponed until the next time these two teams play. It will not be called game over. It will be postponed. So Zach Williams, the right-hander. The inning went like this. Gillespie walked. Barrio singled. Kern pinch hit for Molinari and hit a ground ball to third in which Gelfman had it sneak under his glove for an error to score Gillespie. Then Butcher pinch hit for, for Romero. He struck out for the first out. Nick Gata then walked to load the bases. That's his league leading 30th walk. Bases loaded, one out. Miles Williams coming up. He has three home runs on the year. He's one for three tonight. Tying run at first and Nick Gata Williams can send everybody home happy. No Stompers trailed by four coming in. They've scored one here in the ninth. Miles Williams, the winning run at the plate. Bases loaded, one out. Stompers one for six with runners in scoring position tonight. They have them loaded. Zach Williams against Miles Williams, the first pitch. A fastball outside for ball one. In front of a packed house on the 4th of July, Williams has a chance to give the Stompers their first walk-off win and send everybody home happy. The 1-0 pitch. Miles takes a strike on the outside corner. It's 1-1. One and one. One ball, one strike. Miles Williams with the bases loaded. In a 7-4 game, Stompers trail bottom of the ninth. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Big swing, and he fouls it into the glove of Kozak, 1-2. and two. 
Lights will go out immediately. One in to the count. Williams the winning run at the plate. Barrios at third, Kern at second, got to add first speed all the way around. Zach Williams out of the bullpen, deals on one and two. Williams takes a breaking ball in the dirt and the count evens at two balls and two strikes. Williams readjusts the batting gloves. Digs back in right side. He's singled already in this game. Two balls and two strikes. Nowhere to put him. Zach Williams 2-2 pitch. Miles takes a called strike three on the inside corner and he is furious. Two out now and the last chance for the Stompers tonight as Rob DeAngelis comes up. Stompers who haven't lost at home since June 4th. Down to their final out, Rob DeAngelis is one for four. Two home runs on the season. 12 RBIs, the bases are loaded. The first pitch. Outside, ball one. Four runs on seven hits for the Stompers to this point. Seven runs on seven hits for Salina. The 1-0 pitch to Rob DeAngelis. Hit in the air, left center field coming on is Rocker over toward the gap and sliding to make the catch, Cody Bishop, and that ends the ball game. Stompers drop the game, final seven to four. Seven runs on seven hits, no errors for Salina. Four runs on seven hits and two errors for the Stompers. They strand eight runners on base. The win goes to Lang, he's one and one. The loss goes to Arnold, he's four and one. We're home on Saturday at 6.05. We're on the road tomorrow in San Rafael, and that does it for us here. The Stompers are 18 and 6. Salina is now 10 or 8 and 17. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned.
Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice.